Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Vietnam Innovators. I'm your host, Hao. Thank you for tuning in and tuning out every single week and supporting the program. Today, we have a guest that I haven't seen for a while. The last time I saw him was about six months ago. I sold him some art at an auction, actually. And Tom, are you enjoying that art by any chance? Okay, thank you very yeah. much. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm quite enjoyed. Yeah. Oh, good, yes. good, good. <laughs> And Tom, um, you know, as the founder and CEO of Fuxin yes. Corporation, could you introduce us a little bit to it? Because, you know, when, when the news came out about the recent investment round, uh, people were like, what is this company? Is it coffee? Is it spices? What, what do you guys do? Why do you do what you okay, do? Okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, Actually, I am. My name is Phan Bing Tong. Mm -hmm. I'm CEO of uh, Fuxin Corporation. Fuxin Corporation was set up in 2001 when I was uh, 26 years old, mm. very young. Yep. And I do agriculture business, starting with the pepper, mm. cassia, star anisis, and then uh, we build a factory, starting to build a factory. And uh, 2008, we doing coffee, mm. and we have uh, like 22 years uh, doing the business. Wow. Yeah. And we export, uh, we turn over about 300 million US, Amazing. 300 million US in 102 countries all over the world. And now we have uh, so many products like coffee, like uh, cascara, like um, pepper, cassia, starny seeds. Mm. And we also do the brand like K Coffee. Okay. We also export the K Coffee all over the world, like instant one, roasted, everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, a little context for the audience. I met Anton B purely because of his love for art. And uh, my aunt, who's an art collector, told me that the one best art gallery in all of Saigon is actually his office, where he hangs up all this beautiful art. And he gets to showcase it to the world. A lot of his clients are from overseas. They come to Vietnam for the first time, or they only come here for business. His office is a little bit of a gateway to Vietnam, per se. Uh, and Tom, you know, I, I wanted to invite you on the program, too. Because when the news came out about a month ago, uh, Fuxin received a large investment from a European fund. And I'd love for you to share more about that later. When the news came out, I sent it to some of my friends working in ESG, in private equity, and venture capital. And they were so surprised, in a good way. Yes. They're like, wow, this company that's been around 20 plus years selling Vietnamese products yes. has made such an impact on the agricultural industry where mm. some company found the ambition to invest so much money into it. That was like, when you were 26, did you imagine you'd build a business like this? And then also share with us the story of that investment, how it came to be. Uh, yes, I think that's a 26, uh, when I set up the company, when I was a 26. Mm. But at that time, I don't have so much choice. Mm. I work for the company, government company, and then uh, I do quite good. In politics, I was out of the company, and I think that, uh, I want to continue to do this job. So set up the company is a very good way. And I also like immigrate to um, Ho Chi Minh mm -hmm. because I was born in Haiphong, mm -hmm. no family here. So I work everything alone myself. Wow. So I think set up company is good. I have a good, um, I, I try to convince the buyer, the supplier to support me for starting, but it's not easy. I never think that the, I was now until now, mm. like now. Uh, when I was uh, 26, I just want to make a living because I was uh, alone in Ho Chi Minh yeah. and I want to make a living and I try to sell something, do something business and starting to do business. And uh, open the company is very challenging with me at that time. Mm. I, I have uh, so much difficulty because the big, before we work for somebody and we don't need the loan, we don't need so many things, the mm -hmm. company management. When it was a CEO, when it was 26, even startup, we have to think so many things. We have to pay for staff, we have to pay for the rent, for the office and fund for company, everything. Mm -hmm. But I think that I love my job. It's mm -hmm. the main thing. I love so much my job and I don't have another choice. So when you don't have another choice, you fight for living. So yeah. you try to live. Wow, thank you so much. I, you know, as, as a Vietnamese American, I was yeah. born and raised in the US. When people think of starting businesses, mm -hmm. people say, wow, you're amazing. Like you gave up your corporate job, your income to go on this adventure, congratulations. Yeah. And then in Vietnam, I hear your story and you're like, it's about survival, making yes. a living, yes. wanting a better life. Yeah. Not just because 
you wanted to go make a unicorn billion dollar company, right? No, but no, it was more no. like I think that uh, 22 years ago, it's mm. very different now. Uh, Ho Chi Minh, even that, it's a, Ho Chi Minh is a big gate and more successful in Vietnam, still have a mm. very different now, a lot of uh, bicycle. My bio and so say yesterday. Yeah, what was your definition of a successful business? Was it enough to have food on the plate? Was it enough to feed your kids? What, like, uh, walk uh, us through back then. At that like, time, I was alone. Yeah. Uh, I was alone, 26. I was born in a um, quite poor family. Mm -hmm. My my mother and my father is a worker, mm -hmm. and my parents have uh, seven children. I am last one, so feed seven children, and, and they are workers, it's very hard yeah. in anywhere in the world, not only in Vietnam. But luckily, I have a good education. I go to, my parents send me to university, and I study foreign trade university in Hanoi. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the most famous in Vietnam yep. mm -hmm. until now. Luckily, I have a good education, mm -hmm. and when I open the company, I just want to make a living. Yep. Uh, I have enough, because if you don't work, you cannot survive. Yep. Other than I always it. I fight for living, working very hard. I think I work more than 20 hours per day. You can imagine more than 20 hours a day. And I work many country like when you work with American, yeah. it's a time with different 12 hours. Yeah, and yeah. the buyer just pick you with the phone to talk to you and want to buy something. And normally now, I cannot do like it. 11, maybe even uh, p.m. I already uh, close the phone. <laughs> but at the time, 2 a.m. I still hear the phone selling, buying. But I don't have a choice. So I work so hard for many years. So, yeah. What, what do your parents, your, my your parents, sibling, what do they think about uh, like My parents then? living in, in Haiphong. What do they think about what you do today? <laughs> Actually, that uh, when I was um, uh, in ninth grade, uh, my parents already retired. Mm. And you can imagine that um, my father, when he had me, he was uh, 43 years old, mm. and my mother is uh, 40 years old already. Yeah, yeah. So at the time, they retire and they live in high form. Mm. And they don't imagine that they doesn't know exactly, they didn't know what I am doing, what Seven was doing. Seven kids, that's a lot. Yes, so. it's a very different city, and at that time, fly is not common. Mm. They don't know. I work here and very hardworking and do everything I want. Everything I think is good for living. I work really hard. But it's quite lucky. I have a lot of people support me and help me to uh, raising the fund, to borrow money from the bank and work with supplier, all of this, so I can start in. Hãy tự bảo vệ bản thân ngay hôm nay bằng cách dự phòng HPV và tầm soát định kỳ. What was your big break? Like what allowed you to get to the next level beyond just having food on the plate and making a living? I what tell was that, that. Big, What was that big break? 26 set up and 27 okay. I bankrupt. 27 bankrupt. I got bankrupt. You know that uh, I go to commodity business and yeah. commodity is upside down so much until yeah, now. Right. They can go 100% and go down 50% in few days, in one week. Mm -hmm. And at 27, I got bankrupt. And uh, I don't have anything. You say that I'm losing money, anything. But you know, when you have somebody help you, somebody you depend, you can think about. But I am alone. My parents need my money to send. Mm -hmm. Home, yep, yep. yeah. So who I can help me? Nobody. Mm -hmm. I can only help myself. Yeah. So I still remember that uh, uh, when I go home, I have a small apartment okay. and very tired. So I sleep on the floor, very tired. And um, uh, bank call me and then they cut down the line because they found that I not good and cut down the line. And I still remember the moment until now. You say the break <laughs> is I want to sleep and never want to wake up. Everything come all the time in the same time when I was at 27. Mm. And 27, very still young now, and nobody depends. Mm. Yeah, So I feel that, uh, oh, or better, we, we sleep and never want to wake up. But you know the young, mm -hmm. when you sleep well, you can come again and yeah. you never forget. This is a very strong of young people. Mm. Young people, they have a very strong spirit, mm. health, and they can do whatever they want. Mm. This is a very big gift. Yeah. Yeah. So that was almost 20 years ago when you were 27. <laughs> and it's great to hear ago. that energy. And, um, you know, I really admire not only your energy, but you also have this patience to you in a way. I mean, I've only met you in person a few times, but I, I really admire your your patience. You, yes. you seem like a, a calm person. You have energy, but you feel just have this confidence. I, so I get... my, my question for you is, you know, for the audience to know, as 
and Tom was walking through my office, he was observing that uh, we have a lot of young staff, yeah. etc. And, you know, he likes to see that and he loves to see it. Do you see young people today also having that energy, that that drive, that hunger that you had when you were 26? Like, is there a difference today? You, you know that um, I I want to hear the Gen Z music, yeah? Mm. Like Sơn Tùng, like everybody Gen Z, yeah? yeah. I, I love the music. Yeah. And people said to me that uh, I'm so young like them. Okay. I employ also young people. Mm. In my company, it's one of the big gift I have is uh, I'm very patient with other people, mm. yeah? I love and, and, and patient with other people. I always believe that they can do big thing, yeah? So I motivate. I think that uh, my job is only motivate people mm. to make uh, their dream, yeah? yeah? Uh, later, I can tell you more about the, my organization. Yeah. Uh, but I give a lot of chance to everybody go everywhere in the world. Mm. Like uh, last week, uh, my office have uh, two people get the visa, USA visa. Mm -hmm. They are not the boss, they are lot manager, but they are like leader and staff. Yeah. But they get Americans to work, to uh, set up the office, to traveling, to meet the client, mm -hmm. and we fight for that. And I will give a lot of uh, confidence to the young people mm -hmm. that they can do every, whatever they want if they really believe that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and when I was uh, 27, I, I think that uh, I don't have another child and I build up again. Mm -hmm. I build up again. How long did that build up take? Did it take one I year? I up again, and, and I think one year I, I over the difficulty. Okay. It's very difficult. Yeah. In 2004, I started to uh, uh, to build the first factory, you can imagine. 2004. Okay. 2004. Wow. It means that from 2001 we set up, mm -hmm. and 2002 I bankrupt. Yeah, yeah. In 2004, I can uh, set up the first factory. Yeah. Yes. Do you still have that factory? Yes, we have. Same factory. one. But now it's like eight it's times bigger. Time bigger. Oh, okay. Eight times bigger. It's yeah. really big now. Amazing. I love the enthusiasm. And I mean, you mentioned like you were buying and selling with like U.S. companies and, and all that. Walk us through what it was like being a Vietnamese working in a global environment. Mm -hmm. what, what did the Americans think? Were they, I, were they scared of you? Were you scared of them? I know what you mean. Everybody, many people ask me the same question. Mm. But I was born with um, no fear mm. on, on going out. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I have a very funny talk. If people don't wear anything, they are same. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yes, yeah. I would think like that. So uh, when people go from the, maybe at that time I don't have a man, much money, I'm a bit poor. Mm. But when I see the rich people, I don't mm. feel anything up. At that time I come and meet the buyer and I come to meet the people. They are the owner, came from Europe, uh, Singapore, France, American. I don't feel anything mm. uh, problem. I just came because I think that I have a lot of, I'm very eager to explore. Mm. I have a big story, a lot of story to tell them that we can, I can do it. Yeah. So I came and talked to them, I convinced them to buy for me, talk to them everything. What, what did they think of you? Uh, like, okay, you have, you have this I, no I, fear. I but. think that's a, I, I have a lot of story, I'm very lucky, I'm very lucky. You know that a lot of people help me. I have a big Singapore, big company want to help me. And at that time they brought me to the, the bank and they guarantee for me to borrow. I think it's a like, like, like legend story, it never happened. Mm -hmm. Until now never happened, but I have a lot of people doing the same. Mm -hmm. And the question, why? I, they can they can do like this for me. Mm. You ask me, they scaring me though. They they do love me, and I ask myself that uh, why they do like that, mm -hmm. and I I answer that uh, they can see me like they was young. Mm. Uh, me when they they saw me the the image of mm. me like they was young. So it reminds them uh, of the, themselves. Themselves, and they want to help them. That's really support. interesting. Yes, because. Some of the most successful entrepreneurs that I've met in my life have said something very similar. Yeah. Very similar. Because I think at one point when you have enough money, yeah. let's say, you've made a lot of money in your lifetime, you kind of want to give back, not to just charity. Yes, there's that, of course, too. And continuing to invest yes. in the business. But there's also like investing in those entrepreneurs that had the same challenges that you had. It's, when I talk to story, nobody believed until now. Nobody mm -hmm. believed. Mm -hmm. But it's happened to me. Mm -hmm. And they brought me to the bank mm -hmm. and then they helped me. And not only one case, I have a few cases like this. Mm -hmm. I have um, uh, uh, Singapore, Indian Singapore. Mm -hmm. And normally that Indian Singapore, they are very tight. Mm -hmm. But when they work with me, 
I think maybe I have a lot of energy mm. and I want to make a dream. Yeah. So they help me to to the dream come true. Mm. And also I have a really story with France people, French people, mm. and also American. <laughs> so so it make me feel very lucky to yeah. to set up to running to build the company. Mm. Uh, and until now own the company. Until now, we still working with the company, but they retire, mm. and I work with their son, their their nephew. Wow. Uh, continue. Walk us through. Who are these buyers? Are they are they like retailers? Are they distributors? Are they brands? Uh, I, so I'm I'm kind of moving over a little I, bit. Um, actually, that's a, we are doing B2B, the, okay. because the B2B business, business, the raw material business. Yep, yep, yep. Vietnam is a, one of the biggest the raw material business in the world. Mm. So we are like the first one in uh, like seafood, mm. like rice, mm-hmm. like cashew nut, mm. like pepper, like coffee. We are number one, number two in the world. So we do big business by container. Mm. So we sell to the owner buyer in the container. They are the, the raw material. B2B business. And B2B need a lot of money mm. to do business. I'm very lucky that, that when I set up the company when I was young and the price of that is not so expensive mm. and I have a lot of support to make my dream come true. Oh, wow, you're so excited. I love it. <laughs> yes. That's incredible. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. How do you how do you see the future of your industry? Uh, you mentioned like, you know, number one and number two in the world. Yeah. And you know, I, I love sharing that to people, that mm. Vietnam is number one, number two in something. But the brand of Vietnam, yes, right? The commodity is there, but the brand, what do you think about that? What's the future? Okay, uh, first thing that the, after COVID, mm. after pandemic, the food become very important. Mm. Agriculture, now they think is not the meaning and very important. Mm. Uh, people now t- change the thinking. Okay, before they think about finance, mm. Bitcoin, mm. or the money, yeah. now, they think food is very important. A lot of company in all over the world came to Vietnam, mm. come to Vietnam and mm. and invest on food business, agriculture business. Mm. It's very important. And prior agriculture become very expensive. Mm. Yes, that that is uh, the it's the It's like food thing. security. Yes, the right. food people think and, about and think about it. And when they hungry, when they pandemic, oh, you cannot eat the big corn. You can eat so many things, mm. but you need bread, mm. wheat, or, or rice. So food is very important. So Vietnam is a, become very important on the agriculture, on the food. Mm. And also for last, uh, I think 10 years, special five years, a lot of brand Vietnam, mm. uh, they build it. I think everything need a time. Mm. 20 years ago, like 24, 25 years ago, Vietnam still very poor. A lot of not change, but last 10 years, Vietnam developed so much. Everybody mm. came to Vietnam and say a lot of things and a lot of money came to Vietnam and a lot of brand build it. Mm. So now we are starting to sell our Greek coffee to America, mm. to sell to supermarket. Yeah. And my friend said, ah, oh, in California, they can buy Greek coffee or yeah. something like this. Mm. So it's a changing a lot. And then now Hong Kong, Uncle Isley, my friend said, oh, in Hong Kong, I can buy Greek coffee. Mm. That is uh, amazing, mm. like 10 years ago. Now they're asking brand. So many people are starting to do a lot of brand in Vietnam and starting uh, a little bit famous. Let's talk about the Fuchs in investment that yeah. it received rec- recently. So uh, for those that don't know what I'm talking about, uh, I mentioned earlier in the podcast that uh, Fuchs in Corporation recently received, I believe it was an 80 million. Was it something a lot, uh, a lot of money? I was, uh, the company value, uh, 320 million. Company was valued at 320 million. So you guys received an investment Yeah, we got for, for what? Was it to increase capacity? We have a... Uh, um, after 22 years, mm. we are like private company. Mm. Uh, so we, you want to expand more mm. because you do a lot of business in this uh, area. Mm. So now we get the money to build the two factories. Okay. Yeah, two factory in the business. So okay. coffee factory. So you have three in total then yes. after that. Okay. Yes. So has the business been just you basically since then? Like you yes. as the founder and then, yes, yes, okay. that it. And now the company and then the fund came to the the company and they re, re, we raising the fund to build the factories. How did that relationship start? Did they find you? Did you find them? Uh, when you do good, many IB companies okay, okay. yeah, <laughs> contact you. Yeah? Yeah, 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 I have actually I have a uh, contacted from. 2010, 13 years ago, mm. and we have uh, somebody, but they pay us very low price. So I say no. Okay. I'm very good to say no mm. because everybody say yes, and they 
a lot of ingredient and problem. But I don't feel good value. I say no. Mm-hmm. So many time from 13 years, many people came. And uh, two years ago, we have a very good uh, company, mm-hmm. the IB company, and they are like first class. Mm-hmm. They came to us and convinced us that after 21, 22 years already, mm-hmm. you need to expand. Yeah. Every time you, you put the profit, you need 10 years. Mm-hmm. Maybe raising the fund. It's good, and you can explain double size, yeah, yeah. and and the very big cake. Everybody have a big cake, yeah. so and you can make bigger dream. So yeah. I agree. T- tell us about this company that you have partnered with. Where where is it from? Uh, it actually, that is, they are from Holland. Holland. Yes, okay. they are from yeah. Holland, okay. and the IB company is worldwide. Is the first class. So, I IP sorry. Yeah, IB. Uh, yeah, IB, IB, investment IB. bank. Okay. okay. So so they they introduce they are like service company. They make both of company together, and it's not easy. Mm-hmm. It take about eighteen months to get the conclusion and get finish the deal. Yeah, yeah. And the fund only working with ESG. Mm, wow. So ESG is a very, in Vietnam is very little, where Fuxing is unlike ULIC. Mm. And uh, we starting with ESG like 13 years ago with certified. Mm. So we do a lot of certified system, everything. But ESG asking more. ESG like you work at environment, you work with government mm. and send uh, Govern is or sell. It means that govern companies or sell. It means that uh, you have a system. So so a lot of processing, processing everything. Okay. But we are finished. It. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody talk at ESG, but we mm-hmm. can know ESG. What is ESG already? Because mm-hmm. of we are did ESG. I think uh, three months ago, four months ago. Yeah, everyone is is talking about ESG now. Yes. And uh, and Tom, you know, I I also wanted to invite you on the program because uh, we have an annual ESG conference. Yes. Yeah, uh, okay. It's going to be in May of two thousand twenty four. And it seems like a lot of Vietnamese companies don't know what to do. Yes. They they know that by practicing these policies, yeah. they might attract more international buyers, maybe some investors, but they might be struggling with like, well, uh, I have to make so much investment. It's not worth, uh, you know, when, when am I going to get the money back? Could you talk about that a little bit? Like, did you have the same questions? Or I, actually, that uh, everybody talk on ESG, but yeah. they know what is ESG yeah, is yeah, a yeah. very, very important. And even that uh, E is environment, mm. S is a social and govern. Mm. <clears throat> but actually, what is that? Yeah. Uh, like, like environment, last uh, 13 years ago, I think we have to talk about the food safe and sustainability, yes? Mm-hmm. We have a traceability on this, make us to make yeah. um, safe food and make uh, uh, like, like years like um, sustainability business, mm-hmm. yes? You build a factory not only one year, two year, five year. You, you make a 30, 50 year and forever. You have to live very peaceful with the labor, the land, the people working, the farmer. This is the environment in ESG. Okay. What, what, what did your staff think about these policies? Actually, um, I was forced to do it. Okay. Uh, in 2010, mm. like 14 years ago, I sell to big company in Holland. Mm. And they start talking like about Unilever, this, and, you're like, and they oh, talk okay. about it, and they want the supplier doing it. And mm-hmm. why in uh, I I was I will be kicked out. I would be kicked out. Oh, wow. So I have no choice to do it. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that is a starting with ESG. Like okay, that. so you're forced into it, and then you learned on the go. You learned, you learned and faster. I feel it's a good thing. Okay, I yeah. feel that uh, it's it, it's a very responsibility the uh, the person, and and becomes a company have to be responsibility have a responsibility with the area they are set up with the farmer with the people over there. Yeah. You have to do it. You just don't take the only profit. I think that's like one of the next steps in Vietnam's development, where yeah. it's, it it treats its own brand better. Yes. Like Vietnam has such a large population. There's a lot of agricultural land, but people are, are abusing it, yeah. perhaps, like yeah. taking it for granted yes. because there's so much and it's always there. But then after a while, you know, it's it's starting to run out, right? Or, or become less quality because it's been used and used and used. Um, so it's, it's great to hear that. That's why uh, Fuxing Singh is very different and K Coffee is very different because we already do... Uh, uh, sustainability visit long time, chase me long time. And it make us to get very easy client in the world. Mm-hmm. We get the paid better price, mm-hmm. uh, premium, 
what we get certified. Mm. So I feel that oh, it's amazing. You're upgrading. Yeah, your, upgrade. Your and and one is support for the environment, mm. and one you can get profit. You follow the rule, yeah. and then uh, so so. It means that we like the company have. Um, Uh, something with the government have to work peaceful with area follow the rule law have to pay the tax own is the ESG. Yeah. Uh, before they only sustainability business. Now ESG you have to pay the tax. You have to follow the rule in the native uh, government in the local government. Mm. This is the ESG. Mm. And then you have a govern. It means that you have a cheat your stuff well system. You build system like AI. You change to software. Mm. So this is the also Z. Uh, Z uh, is the for that. The governance. So yeah. so all the thing we have a, a come up in the same time. Mm. So we were the DD by the company. Mm -hmm. They have a ESG the system. Mm. So 90% percent we over. Mm. So it's good, but ESG is a nice that uh, nice, that lesson. Nice on the way go to not the the. the it doesn't finish. finish right away. I know if we know the way, it's on the way you are making better yourself. I'm sure you have a lot of friends in agriculture as well, and like uh, people that you have built your business with, they have their own factories too. Maybe they're building their own brands, and what do they ask you about ESG? Like, what are their questions? Because I'm I'm assuming that they haven't been as Quick. I tell you, maybe uh, they don't, uh, they don't like me. But actually, <laughs> they talk ESG, but I almost they don't know. They don't know what is the ESG, okay, okay. Uh, and then and then they don't want to hear from agriculture uh, mm -hmm. to talk about it yeah. because maybe finance, maybe the jewelry, uh, or jewelry, or many company like it. But uh, if anybody asking me. Uh, I will tell, but uh, I have a newspaper asking me mm. to public to talk about, and I was uh, like people, they want me to present, to talk about the ESG for their group, mm. uh, for their the client. Yep, yep. And so I also have an invitation like that. Okay. So it's good. It's good that uh, we can, uh, uh, you can teach them, you can educate, you can communicate own information with other. It also is the ESG way. Yeah. I'm guessing since some of those articles came out about the investment, you've received even more interest. Yes. What kind of interest are you seeing as a result? I think that it's like amazing. When we publish the new, we have our own new paper mm. and have everybody calling, everybody sends a take, everybody say that. And we have a, a very high uh, chance it mm. on the, on the yeah, information. Yeah, yeah. And it's very interesting because now is a, is, I think the pandemic, after pandemic, mm. it's a company, I think the work economy down. Mm. So we have a very positive news mm. and especially agriculture business. Mm. Yes. Mm. And it's very good that it make a like breaking news for everybody. Mm. And I see that we are on the first, uh, I think the first day, the first page, mm -hmm. many very famous newspaper yeah, on yeah. the investment. I think it's good because the, the private company is a value high value and they build very good thing. And mm. then they, they have an investment yep. from the company doing the ESG is also is a trendy. I, I, inspire. I, I liked it as well. It was encouraging to see because I think one of the things that investors are concerned about Vietnam is yeah. things like transparency, mm -hmm. uh, governance. Mm -hmm. so, most of these people and funds also don't have employees here. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for them to do due diligence or yeah. to trust the partner that they want to invest in. Mm -hmm. And so when the news came out, I was like, yeah, that's awesome. You know, like step by step, we can build more and more trust into the markets in Vietnam and yeah. have confidence in the next generation of entrepreneurs here who are doing cool stuff. So and also uh, it's, a, it's a good thing that we are 17 years doing the big uh, audit, the big, big four. Uh, It's a private company, but yeah. 17 years we audit by big four company. I think it's very unique. Yeah. And also we have an ERP from 2007, only is our system. Mm -hmm. Now people say change to number, change to AI, or change to uh, software. Do but yeah. I do it starting uh, uh, 2017 okay. and keep doing it until now, 2007, and keep until now. So. Did, did you think, have an advisor or a business partner that helped you with that? Or did you kind of just figure it out? I think it's the first thing that I travel a lot. Okay. So you uh, hear when, from other when people. When I travel, because I go to a lot of to Switzerland company and German company. Uh -huh. I meet a lot of small, medium company. Mm -hmm. The first thing I see, every factory, they have uh, laboratories. Mm -hmm. In Vietnam, private never opened the laboratory. Okay. We that, did it on 2009. Mm -hmm. It means 15 years ago. 
Uh, and we have a uh, ERP system 2007. Mm. So I saw it. I say if I manage, if I traveling, if I do a lot of things, I need system control it management by by software. Mm. So that's why we be with we people. And now I think uh, 17 years already on on the software. Yeah. So it's good that I traveling. So I can see that, so I can bring everything good. Yeah. But we also using a lot of advisor mm. on uh, on the on the business. Mm. Okay, very good. It's great to hear that you're going out there learning from people. You're engaging with professionals, ad- advisors, and what I find in Vietnam is a lot of people like to keep it to themselves. Yes, because of they're afraid of like sharing too many secrets or something like that, or competition, you know, leak out information or something like that. I ask, okay, so my question, Antom, is what does the next generation of Vietnamese businesses like yours have to do to keep up with the world? I think that um, we also do like, our focusing is a uh, uh, private, mm. but public management. Right. Okay. Yeah, we don't have a so much right mm. own the public people. Yeah. And like Vietnam, I think it's very good chance for young people because now is Vietnam is a very good destination for investment. You see so many investment from all over the coming. Mm. Vietnam have a huge agriculture business. Mm. Like Holland, I never think that Holland is a is a second largest a potato export. Mm. The small country. So Vietnam, I think it's a good chance to become a world uh, that relation mm. uh, was the main producing yeah. like agriculture business and young people I think that uh, they should they should bring more value added mm. on that uh, like like old people already done mm. because uh, we sit I think that we, we try to make a Vietnam is a center it mm. means that uh, a lot of factory value added you have to uh, I think invest and, yeah a lot of value that uh, business and try to must be very creative mm-hmm. to keep it but actually that the nowadays night coffee in vietnam mm. uh, very famous nowadays in the world mm-hmm. before 10 years ago they said vietnam coffee is a very uh, not good everything has it quality but after 10 years i think the robusta vietnam is i think perfect excellent yeah. like many very good brands they using vietnam Robusta 70% mm. and now very expensive. Mm. They still using it. It means that the, the quality is very different already. Mm. Year by year, Vietnam changing a lot. Like, like Dorian, also Vietnam, good coffee, mm. pepper, uh, the price of, of quality also very much different. Mm. It means that we already, already invest a lot of uh, uh, producing mm-hmm. uh, factory value added. Yes. been in business for 23 years. What does the next 23 look like? You know that um, we have a planning for next five years. Mm. So uh, we, we try to get the 650 million US turnover for the building Doubling. a lot of factory. Yes, yeah. because we are doing this. Yeah. On the IB said the unicorn is not very far with the focusing. Mm. Uh, but we do a lot of brand now. Mm. We build a lot of factory for branding because I saw that I try to open the shop. I try to do branding like Cascara. I bring a lot of uh, uh, factory in Vietnam mm. to many area mm-hmm. and build the new products. Yeah. Uh, many products in Vietnam now only focusing produce wow. like free dry green pepper, mm. uh, pepper in brine, Cascara, mm. all the industry products, mm. but only focusing doing it. Wow. And we try to make more brand. So before uh, they talk only focusing is export and B2B, I think in next 10 years, people see that focusing is a brand company. Mm. They can produce so many brands. But I'm very happy that uh, Vietnam give me a chance to rule from uh, farm to cup. Mm. It means that we have a farm, we have a factory, we have a roasting, producing, the packaging and distribution mm. and own the chain coffee shop. So okay. this is a what I'm going to do in the future. Okay. And I try to make more product for Vietnamese. You understand that the, the reason we do coffee with, the, I think, eight years ago, I feel that the own coffee Vietnam is the own flavor mm. and chemical. Mm. But I think that we are the biggest country in Robusta coffee. Mm-hmm. Why we have to drink that kind of coffee? Mm. So that is the cake coffee happen. And mm. from that, we build so many products for local, not only export, mm. for local using. Yeah, this yeah. is my target. I, yeah, I, you know, locals are making more money than ever. Yes. So they don't need cheap anymore. They need no. good. 
we are Vietnamese, so we try to to change it, adapting that, and we, we try also, we need something for us to browse mm. that we can do for Vietnamese, not only ex- uh, import mm. uh, quality, import cargo. So so that is also my main target for next many years. Okay, that's incredible. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing. And yes. um, that's enough about Phuc Sinh, everybody. everybody. Um, I mentioned earlier at the start of the show that uh, Anton is a very avid art collector. Uh, and in fact, he loves to talk about, not only talk about it, but introduce art to a lot of international people who don't know anything about art or even Vietnamese art. Tell us about that hobby. I just want people to understand you a little bit better and okay. your other interests. Um, yeah. I came to ask very, uh, not uh, I tried to do uh, from beginning. Mm. Uh, it's suddenly mm. I get it. Okay. I build a house. And I think that uh, because I'm traveling, I see all my uh, my friend, my buyer, how they always have a very good painting. <laughs> yes. So I think, oh, we, we are going to buy nice painting. I don't have any clue yet. Mm. So I have asked my friend. And luckily, uh, she took me to the, one of the most famous at that time, the gallery. Mm. So I choose art. Until now, that kind of painting can still inspire me a lot. Mm. And I hang it in the wall. It's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. It makes my room, uh, my living room so nice. Mm-hmm. So I thought, oh, when my wife came and she also feel very inspired, she loves so much. Mm-hmm. So I think, oh, why you, we don't hang on the office mm-hmm. and, and more space? Mm-hmm. So we keep buying and then doing it. Uh, especially that when 2007, I keep buying and selling a lot of painting. And my buyer, when they came in, wow, they make so much impressive. Mm. I think that uh, like in Europe, like Germany, Switzerland, Austria, if somebody collects art, it means they are very different. Mm. It's cost them a lot of money. They're curious. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of money. Yeah. So they came here, they see the office so nice, mm. also very beautiful. Mm. The Vietnamese painting and art is very talented. So make my buyer, they concentrate on art. They don't consider on uh, <laughs> what are Phuc Sinh doing yeah, here. Yeah, okay, they yeah. say, oh, if Phuc Sinh has it, maybe they have a very high class. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they have a, a lot of, give a lot of support. Mm. Like they, they have a sympathy take with me, they understand me more yeah, yeah. and do, and they give me a lot of choice, Chan. And when they check the factory, they check on so easier when they see the art. <laughs> yes. It's nice on the eyes. Nice so. on the eyes. <laughs> and then, and then uh, they give a lot of chance, give, give a lot of order. Uh-huh. Uh, they give us like a little bit uh, respected, mm. more respected, uh, respect than normal. Mm. Uh, so I think art bring a lot of things. Mm. And then many will want to buy the art. Mm. So I make a connection. I sell, I buy and sell in art. I make a bit money. Yeah. But the thing that I involve more in art. Mm. And then uh, I keep buying. After eight years, six, uh, six years, some painting go three times, 400 percent wow. it's go very expensive mm. like Chen New mm. so it's a like big investment also mm. yeah I have a one painting I buy 12,000 and some of a person asking me 130,000 wow. in 10 years yeah in 10 years I can uh, so can people go see the art I mean I was a guest and yeah. obviously I know you so I was able to go in but um, do you have a space that people can see um, like, uh, you know that we have a lot of buyer all okay. over the world that come to see it yeah. and some people want to uh, like the nobody like the, my friend yeah. they are not my friend They're just people that admire uh, people art. yes yeah. Yeah. they want to see so I think about it maybe I will open the, um, the gallery mm. for everybody can okay. see it yeah, yeah. and uh, I have a friend like Madame Phuoc, she mm. also said that, oh, Tom, if you can bring the children, you bring the pupil, go to saw a collection, it's a very good appeal mm. because they can feel how beautiful it is yeah, yeah. and they can understand the art from Vietnam. Mm. And I think it's the best way that you see the physical. Mm. It's the physical. How they can see the gallery, you can collect it. Mm-hmm. It's very important, but you think about it. So I think it's a good idea. I'm also thinking about it. Okay. How to communicate yeah, yeah. Uh, with the um, uh, with the gallery mm-hmm. and make an exhibition, and also how to communicate with the people, with the people loving art. Well, we we definitely have something to talk about later. Then yes. And, um, since I came to your office, I've uh, started collecting myself just for fun, and mostly artists from Hue because. Um, my family is from Hue, like Madame Fung, for yeah. instance. And uh, yeah, not only does it look nice, but there's a story to tell. Yes. Uh, when you have guests over, 
that kind of thing. It's 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 a great uh, way to introduce Vietnam. I have one last question for you, uh, Antom, and I always ask this to my guests on my show. You're an expert in agriculture. Uh, you know how to do manufacturing. Um, you know much more about art than most people. What do you not know about? And I and and what do you what are you curious about? So I ask you this because the next guest I will invite on this show will answer your question. So you mean that uh, I curious? Yeah, but you don't know enough. Uh, uh, you want to curious yeah. um, uh, what? Actually, that um, I have uh, so many things mm. I want to do, mm. but I don't have a time. Mm. Yeah, like movie. Movies. Okay. Yes, I love movies so much. Mm. Yeah. So I even I have a, a few people want me to invest in movie. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And if I go to the cinema, mm. I try to watch two or three movies in wow. the same time. Wow. Yes. Okay. And and I remember that the few movie I watch, I go to the cinema to watch four times because I really love movie. Is it, are you watching international movies, Vietnamese movies, both? both. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, while we're on that topic, Vietnamese industry, cinema, mm. and movies. What are your thoughts on it? Is it is it going anywhere? Is it uh, do you see opportunity there? I think I think a lot of op- when I work international, mm. I think a lot of uh, op- opportunities. Mm. When I was trading, mm. I will ask myself why Holland do it, mm. Vietnamese uh, Holland do it, Hong Kong do it, why I cannot do it? Yeah, yeah. So I do everything. I buy from Philippines, I buy from Indonesia, I sell to Hamburg, mm. I buy from Africa to sell American. I do everything like this, mm. example like this. So, so I don't uh, put me like second class. I always do everything freedom. We're always, yeah, always po- freedom. There's always unlimited possibility. Yes, yes. Okay. I think I can do in business. Until now, everybody, uh, when I talk like this, people don't believe. Mm. I, I already buy globe, you know, globe mm. from Madagascar mm. and sell to Arab Saudi. Mm. But I buy from um, Benzem guy, mm. they take from Madagascar and they sell to Hong Kong guy, and Hong Kong guy sell to Arab Saudi. <laughs> yes, so you know that the document travel is it, yeah. but the Madagascar ship direct to Arab Saudi. Okay. So you mean you mean that the, normally I already very open mind when I was very young, 2017, mm. and I see the cinema also. Mm. I see a lot of actors, very beautiful and very talented. Mm. They don't have um, many crew. Mm. Uh, they don't have a very good story okay. and director to do it. Mm. Yes, and I think that the Vietnamese people are very talented actors and actor. They need the good uh, movie mm. to open. Mm. Yes, mm. everybody go to uh, yeah. Hollywood, and before is a Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. But I think that the very talented actors and actor, they need the support. They need the people can handle it. Yeah, mm. understanding and handle it. Yeah. and I think it's a time only. <laughs> That's great. I love I love hearing that. I'm Tom, and again, super. I love the enthusiasm, and yes. I only wish the best for Fuxin. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing today. Thank you very Everyone, much. Everyone, I've wanted on Tom on the show for a while, and when the news came out, I was quite grateful that he's extended his time here with us. So if you're curious about Fuxin, if you're curious about Antom and his art collection, uh, we'll include information in the link below to, so you can read more about Fuxin and what they do. Uh, we'll include some photos of uh, his office art gallery as well. It's been such a pleasure to learn from you though, Antom, today and uh, best of luck. I can't wait to see the business grow to $650 million in turnover oh. in, in five okay, years time. Thanks. So. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, thank you for tuning in for another episode of Vietnam Innovators, everyone. I'm Hao. This is Antom. And thank you so much again and see you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hao.